Honorable Ministers of Health, participants from member states, representatives from partner agency, civil societies, and patient associations, and colleagues and ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here in Glasgow for the World Hepatitis Summit. I appreciate the time and effort many have invested to attend this important gathering. The hard work you has produced many successes in battle against hepatitis. More and more, we see that only by working together can we effectively create a global response to eliminate this epidemic. I would especially like to express appreciations to the government of Scotland for the hosting this important summit. Scotland is at the forefront of the battle against hepatitis. The work done here is an inspiration for others on how to tackle transmissions, especially hepatitis C among society's most vulnerable groups. Viral hepatitis is the seventh leading cause of mortality in the world mainly from chronic hepatitis B and hepatitis C, and subsequent liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. Hepatitis kills an estimated 1.45 million people each year worldwide. Millions of others, including friends and family, continue to live with hepatitis, watching and waiting for access to effective care and treatment. Indeed, the vital viral hepatitis has been a silent epidemic for many, many years. But now we have broken the silence. I'm here today because hepatitis and its terrible consequences are important to me, not just as a regional director for WHO, but personally. In my home, in the Western Pacific region, the gravity of the situation was apparent over decades. While we have 25% of global population, 40% of all deaths from hepatitis occur in the region. The situation was so serious that in 2005, member states in my region adopted a target of reducing to less than 2% of prevalence of hepatitis B in five year old children. Setting a target with a focus on vaccinations and time-bound goals proved crucial for the regional response. 20 years ago, 8% of young children in the region were infected with chronic hepatitis B. Today, 30 of 37 countries and areas in our region, uh, my region, have achieved the 2012 milestone of less than 2% prevalence of hepatitis B among five-year-old. Our goal is now a prevalence of less than 1% in the region by 2017. 12 countries have already reached this milestone. And even more encouraging is the fact that the prevalence in the regional cohort of children born in 2012, is lower than its target. The importance of the birth dose in this achievement cannot be overstated. In the future, millions more children in our region will enjoy their life with the free of hepatitis B. The success is a lesson. We have learned that we can reverse deadly trend. Now the millions of people in the region who continue to live with hepatitis and the risk of liver cancer also need our support. We have all seen the tremendous advancement made in antiviral treatment. These treatments can change the lives of people living with hepatitis B and C. We have new medicines that can cure hepatitis C and stop the progress of hepatitis B, which reduces the risk of liver cancer. 
These developments in hepatitis C treatments are true revolution. The cure rate is incredible, over 95% after only three months of therapy. These oral medications for hepatitis B and C were added to the virtual essential medicine list in 2015. However, the extremely high price of these new hepatitis C drugs can put them out of reach of all but the wealthiest people. In 2014, the World Health Assembly urged member states to respond at the national level to address hepatitis effectively. The World Health Assembly directed the WHO to provide the necessary technical support to enable countries to develop comprehensive national strategies and action with time-bound goals. In the Western Pacific region, these efforts have already been begun, already begun. For example, China is building on its success in achieving high birth dose coverage by working to improve treatment coverage. I applaud their commitment. In Mongolia, no family is un untouched by hepatitis. The government recently negotiated low drug prices for new hepatitis C medicines. These efforts are inspiring other countries to act. At the regional level, the Brecho Regional Office for the Western Pacific has, been, has begun extensive consultation with member states on new regional action plan and plan will contain a series of steps that together will constitute an effective response to hepatitis. These steps include the broad-based advocacy and awareness, and understanding our epidemic through better data, and supporting national hepatitis action plans, and preventions, diagnosis, and effective treatment. This detailed action plan will be presented to the regional committee for endorsement in this October. Next year, the global health sector strategy for viral hepatitis will be considered by World Health Assembly. I understand that the strategy will include the goals of elimination of hepatitis by 2030. This goal will be a huge challenge, but we can accomplish it. As we work on many technical challenges, we must not forget the issue of stigma with hepatitis. The stigma of hepatitis still prevents many people from taking employment or leading a normal life with normal relationships. Like most stigma situations, the stigma of hepatitis is curable with information and understanding. As we together, we gather here to discuss new tools and ideas, let's also try to think of ways to reduce stigma in societies. Only by working together will we be able to address the challenge of eliminating new hepatitis infections in the coming years and restoring health to million people living with a hepatitis. We must have an alliance of governments, civil society, activist groups, and patient associations, NGOs, and others, all working together in this battle to save literally millions of lives. I have a complete, complete confidence and trust in your ability. No longer will hepatitis be a silent epidemic. Thank you for your commitment, and I wish you a productive meeting. Thank you.